Awesome. Okay. So thank you all for coming today. I'm really, really excited to share with you what I learned in the four day MBA. It was absolutely amazing and super grateful that I spent the time. It was four days full on like 12 hours in Texas learning from Keith Cunningham, who most of us know really well from the Tony Robbins world. Um, I'm just going to share quickly the outcomes of what I want to do here so that you're all really clear on what we're doing. And if it's the right fit for you, please stay. And if it's not the right fit for you, please go because your time is your most valuable resource and I really respect and honor your time. So what I wanna do is share my key takeaways. I went through all my notes, four days of notes in the last day and it was amazing going through it. Super fun, I'm gonna share with you those. And then what I would love is when I'm done sharing these to answer any questions or clarify any points that I've brought up. And also if everyone wants to share just one key takeaway of what they're going to implement into their business. I think that would be really cool because we're so inundated with information and ideas and let's do this and do that. And Keith said it the best. He's like, if you're not executing on a plan, not an idea, you're doing nothing. It doesn't matter how much you know, it matters what you execute on. So that would be really cool for anyone who's willing to, you know, stay to the end, ask some questions and then share what value they got from this call and what they're going to implement into their business specifically that would be really cool okay so key takeaways um what you and i'm looking down at my ipad on my little notes here um what you don't measure you don't care about getting better in you need a scoreboard to know if you're winning so this spoke to me so much and became so obvious to me because anyone who's good at anything is tracking themselves right i had a friend over yesterday she's a swimmer she was olympian level and she you know you're always tracking you're getting to the end of the lane and looking at your times and if you're not doing that you don't know if you're getting better or not so if you don't already have optics in your business to see what are the levers that matter the most that might be a good thing to consider putting in so that you're actually tracking those on a daily weekly monthly basis and you know that you're actually getting towards your goals. Um, and to do that to have a good scoreboard, you need to know where you start right so it's like if you're a swimmer, you need to know your starting time. If you're losing weight, you need to know you're starting weight. If you're starting a business, you need to know you're starting revenue, even if that revenue is zero, like to actually put that down and to know, okay, here's where I'm at. And then tracking, oh wait, I made 5,000, I made 100,000, whatever it is, wherever your business is, to actually be tracking all of those metrics is vital to the success of your business. Um, so he did spend two full days on accounting, basically. He recommends, accrual accounting. I'm not going to go in depth on accounting at all or what I learned from that, except to say that he recommends accrual accounting and also he um, he talks all about free cash flow, which is the cash flow in your business that matters the most, because if you can't you can't spend your profits, you can only spend your cash. So if yeah, if that's something that that interests you to know further and it should because as business owners, we are here to make money and make a profit and make cash, which is what we can spend, then definitely I recommend his programs 100% and, and learning more about that. And the other thing I'll say about free cash flow is that and, and just about accounting in general, he talks about, especially if you ever want to exit your business as business owners, we write off as much as possible in our businesses right and have a separate line he calls it like the bullshit line or something where you know and your accountant doesn't necessarily need to know but you know that these are the expenses that you could actually take out if you weren't in your business so if that makes sense like there's things that any business would need to you know you would need to buy this or buy that or invest in this but if it's something that is kind of per personal to you but you can legally write off and of course we all do it um, just make sure that there's a separate line item so that if you ever want to sell your business, you can easily add that back in to show what the actual business is making without you in it. I hope that makes sense. Um, and by the way, if anyone wants to ask questions so to clarify along the way, that might be a bit easier than, than waiting to the end. I'm happy to do that as well. Um, let's see. Francis, that would be meals, travel, write-offs to various things, correct? Yeah, exactly. That you're writing off for yourself, but if somebody else buys your business, they might have a completely different lifestyle and never travel. So it's not actually a business expense, even though you can really write it off as a business expense. So exactly. Good clarification. Um, find out what, and I'm sorry, I'm going to, my phone is buzzing somewhere and it's, 
really distracting me. So please excuse me for a second. I apologize. I didn't Go ahead. know that I put this. I'll entertain the group. I'll start singing for the group while you look for your phone. So, sorry, say that again. I'll entertain the group by singing uh, while you look for your you, phone. Thank you, Fernanda. I appreciate that. All right, I'll be back in a moment. Thanks, guys. All right. Do we have any birthday? P uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, who's having birthdays this month? Fernando, I just want to say you're such a keeper, you're a trooper guy. Honestly, <laughs> we need more Fernandos in our lives. Amazing, <laughs> thanks. yeah, thanks, Liz. So, no birthdays. Uh, we should sing happy birthday, anyways. Happy birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. you. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear everyone. Oh, Happy birthday God. to you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Fernando. You know what we're singing happy birthday to? Our businesses that have new optics now. So that's what we're doing. Yes. We're celebrating our new businesses and how we're going to make them even better than they are. Um, okay. So find this was a huge one. Find out what they want and give it to them. Um, this is something that can literally be applied to your business life, to your personal life. It's not about what you want as a business. It's about what do your cu customers want and what's the outcome that they want. And if you fall in love with your customers' outcomes, okay. then you're going to, and if everyone can please mute themselves if they're not talking, that would be super helpful, please, and thank you. Um, it, so if you fall in love with your customers outcomes and not your business you're going to be thriving and successful right so this was one of the key it's so meant much of this is simple right like where do you want to give your business you want to give your business to people that are giving you something that solves a need for you that solves a problem that makes your life better in a way so if you focus on those outcomes that your client wants you're also going to be successful find out what they want and give it to them and that can be by literally asking them directly that can be by observing the market and seeing where there's a gap in the market so there's so many ways to do that that can i think and keith tells a really cute story about when he met his wife he set her down for this date and they were at lunch and he asked her what she wanted and he's like that woman talked for an hour and a half I was like, that's amazing that she really knew what she wanted that much. And then Keith was obviously willing and able to give her what she wanted, right? If, if someone tells you what they want and you're not willing or able, they're not your customer, right? So if you really set a stake in the ground and say, hey, this is what I'm about. This is what we're about. This is what we do. If you want this, you probably are going to want to do business with us. If you don't want this, you're probably going to want to do business with them. If you want that, you're probably going to want to do business with them. And so to get so clear on who you're serving that it's just obvious, right? It's a no brainer to do business with me if you want this, but if you want that, go over there. It's different, it's not who I am, right? And then you can stay in your lane and and really you know, do what you do best and what you enjoy best. Um, thinking time, this was the one thing that I wrote down literally every day that if I took nothing else from this course, I would implement thinking time, which is, sounds so simple and most of you probably don't know this, but I actually used to work for a think tank when I first moved to Hawaii. So yes, I need to get back to literally thinking. Um, so it's literally scheduling the time and scheduling whether it's 45 minutes or an hour, an hour and a half so that you can really get into the space, taking away all distractions. We always have our phones on us, like put that away, turn it off, go to our room with no kids, no dogs, no nothing with a great question a great question about your business and i'm happy to share i have a huge list of questions that i can share with everyone i can email if anyone wants them um, just ask me and i'm happy to send them to you a good question about your business and he says that always have another dot on the page as you're doing this thinking time because there's always going to be another answer and you're going to get deeper and deeper and he says the gold is in the last third usually of your thinking time and what was cool is that during the event um, we actually had some time to think. We had literally thinking time all together. And it was fascinating the things that came out of those thinking sessions and the clarity that came out of those thinking sessions because there's no point, and this goes back to knowing where you are, to know where you want to go and those optics and the scoreboard. 
there's no point in taking action and doing all these things if it's not actually getting you closer to your goal, right? So to have a time to reevaluate and to see, okay, is this where I want to go? Is this what I want to do? Are these the people that I want to serve? Where am I? Where do I want to be in this market? Whatever the question is, and there's so so many really good ones. Um, if you actually sit with yourself, you're going to see that you actually can do so much less because you're so much more efficient now with what you're doing because you've got gained that clarity. And I'm, I'm really, really passionate about thinking time because it's been something that I've heard about before. I've heard him speak about before. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. Huh? And, and I didn't implement it. And he talks about how most of our errors, if you think about the money you've lost, the dumb tax that you've paid, and I have definitely paid some dumb tax in my life, is it's not, oh, this thing just happened. It's a dumb tax is typically the result of, you know, he calls it something like unbridled optimism and not looking at your risks and all of those things. Most dumb taxes could have been avoided if you actually took the time to think and, and evaluate whatever opportunity is presenting itself and make sure it's actually in alignment with what you want, what you need and what you're going for. Um, there's a story that I heard once that I remember it was some someone who didn't make an investment in something that could have made him millions. And the way that he felt good about that, and he really did, is because he had actually evaluated it and given what he knew at the time, he made the right decision, right? So none of us can ever go back, but to know that we've actually given things careful thought, I think is one of the most important things we can do to really make sure that we're accomplishing and doing what we intend to. Okay. Um, a, oh, a, oh, this is good. So especially for those of us with a team, he says, adopt A players, don't hire B players. And so what that means, if you're adopting someone, you're really bringing them on, showing them what you expect out of the position. It's impossible for you to fire them. They fire themselves if they don't show up with the expectations of what you said from the get-go, um, what, what is needed on the job. So I thought that was something that was super helpful is he gave the analogy of like, you put them in charge of brushing their teeth you're not their mom, you're not asking them, hey, did you brush your teeth today? They're reporting back in as opposed to you going in to check in. And then if you have those A players, they want that scorecard, they want the report card, they want to know they've done a good job and they'll know that because you as the business owner have set the expectations of these are the metrics and this is what's gonna move the needle forward and here's your role, why it's important in the business and this is what I need and expect from you to know that you're doing your job well. Um, so any clarification needed so far? That was like a general overview, and then I've got some notes on each day, which is really fun to get into. This is amazing. Thank you so much, Francis. Taking tons of notes here. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Yeah, you're so welcome. Okay, so priorities. Um, if you are giving time or resources, and I should say any resource to something, right? Whether it's time, whether it's money, whatever it is, your resources tell you where your priorities are right so, for example, if you say okay i'm going to implement thinking time that's a great idea. You need to take something else out of your schedule because you're already doing all these other things and you're doing could be scrolling social media for an hour right and maybe that's what you're going to take out of your schedule to do thinking time, but whatever you're putting your resources to is what you're prioritizing and so that could even be a good exercise as well is where are you putting your resources where are you putting your time where are you putting your money and evaluating is that investment giving you the return that you want it to because this is another thing he talks about is that accountants have expenses business owners have investments Meaning, nothing is an expense as a business owner it's an investment and are you being conscious about what you're investing your time money resources everything else in um and then as well with the questions, he talks about the only constant in business is change. And so what's a great idea today could be a horrible idea tomorrow, right? Because obviously the economy is constantly shifting, the markets are constantly shifting, our customers are constantly shifting. So asking great questions continuously is the key to success. This was a really cool one too. He, he had these four hats that he literally put on during the seminar, these four different hats. And it was um, the idea that 
in your business, you're going to have to wear different hats at different times of your business. So he gave the example as he's presenting this seminar, he is operating the seminar. He's, you know, he's doing the, the metrics of giving the seminar. He's the operator, if you will. But when he was creating the seminar, he was an artist. And so he had to have a different hat on for that role. Um, as the owner of the business, that's a different hat. That's a different role. And then a board member of your business, then you're really, that's who, who you take to the thinking time is your board member. You're asking the big questions. You're asking the important questions. So um, that that was super helpful for me to consider. You know, I, I think especially for those of us who've gone to business mastery, we think about, oh, we're owners, not operators. Yes, and we actually have to play different roles within our business at different times. And that was really helpful. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, this is so fun. Okay, the scorecards again, optics and strategy. If you can't read the score bar, scorecard board, you don't know the score. And if you don't know the score, you can't tell the winners from the losers. So to me, that was the second most important thing that I took away from the whole event is if I'm not evaluating everything in my life to see, you know, where do I want it? What's my goal with it? What's my standard with it? What's my outcome with it? then I don't want to get better in it. And so he told a story about how, you know, he's playing a golf game and uh, really, or he was at the driving range, sorry, and a pro who he's friends with came up and said, hey, let's play, what's your handicap? And he said, I don't have a handicap. And the pro said, well, then you must not want to get better at golf. And he's like, oh, I guess not. So then he figured out his handicap. And I think, again, that's true for any part of our life. If we don't know where we are and we're not tracking it, then life just happens as opposed to us creating whatever life we want it we want to create um this 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 really spoke to me because i've been to so many events and courses and seminars he says the biggest problem isn't that you don't know what to do it's that you don't do what you know which i was like <laughs> guilty um so Ordinary things consistently done produce extraordinary results. Um, and that's been a theme in the last week that has just kept coming up for me of, it's not you know hard work that makes people successful, it's consistent progress and realignment that makes people successful, right? So it's having that, that target, that outcome, that whatever you're going towards, and then constantly checking in and recalibrating if necessary. And I, I did this meditation the other day where I had this really beautiful visual of it's a journey, right? And, and it, on a journey, you decide where you wanna go and you start going there and then you might like take another route or you might stop for some tea or to go somewhere to do something, but you always check in to say, am I getting to where I wanna go? And maybe you've changed your mind along the way of where you wanna go, right? I feel like there's space for that and just knowing, okay, now it's shifted. I don't want to go there. I'm actually going to go there. So just constantly rechecking in with yourself is super vital to making sure that you're, you're making progress in the right direction. And that's something that he talks about so much when he talks about keeping a scoreboard is optics. If you don't have optics, you can be heading in the wrong direction. You can be growing, your business is growing, but you, you're not growing actually in the way that you want to. You're not growing sustainably. You're not actually being profitable. That's something else he talks about. You know, if you are growing, 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 but you're not actually becoming more profitable, well, what's the point of the growth? And so that could be a really good question for thinking time is what is the outcome that you want in your business? And if it's just to maximize revenue, for example, you know, if you're in the hospitality business and you wanna just maximize revenue, you might have a super budget accommodation, but if you wanna provide a really luxurious experience, your expenses are gonna be much higher your profit margins might even be lower, but your outcome is providing a luxurious experience. And so that's what you're going for. So to get really clear on, you know, are you here to, to make money? Are you here to have a lifestyle? Are you here? What are you here for? What's your business here for? And then you can strategize based on that. Strategy is something um, that he talks about a lot too. He says that it's, you know, you have to think big picture before you think, what do you going to do to get there right so it's not like oh i need to optimize my social media i need to create a website i need to those are like things to do but what are you actually creating and bringing into the market um, and what problem are you solving okay let's see 
talked about that. Oh, this is actually super important too, in terms of the assets that your company has. And your assets can be property, plant, equipment, or employees. How many people or how many dollars, and those dollars can be in terms of the people that you're employing, the assets that you have on hand, whatever it is, anything that your business owns or hires, whatever it is, how many dollars does it take to produce a dollar of revenue? And is that number going up or down? Right. And so if you don't have those optics, you can have like I talked to someone the other day and they have a hair salon and they didn't know what their numbers were at all per chair. So it's like, well, do you need more chairs or less chairs? Well, you don't know unless you track that. Right. Um, let's see. We talked about that. Talked about that. Um, oh. If you had all the customers that you've ever that have ever tried you, where would your business be? And for anyone who has tried you and is no longer with you, why aren't they with you? So to ask yourself, really, what what is not if if this person was the right fit for my service, what value have I not have I created but not delivered, and what value do I is not perceived? Sorry, was there a question? Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, this is, he talks again about knowing where you are, right? Because we all have this, oh, we ought to be there. Knowing where you are, knowing where the is line is, is of vital importance to get to the ought line. And he says that the obstacle is the way. So whatever is in the way is, showing up for you is how to get to where you ought to be and what is the the next logical step to get there what is the next logical step and if you ask yourself that question consistently you're going to get to where you ought to be um i have a question yes you were saying um ask yourself this question what value have i created but not delivered and something else you said yeah so what value have I created but not delivered and what value is not perceived? So basically you can have the most amazing business, the most amazing idea, something that's really gonna help people, right? But if you're not delivering that value and people don't perceive your value, you're never going to actually be able to help the people that you've set out to serve. Right. right? So if, if you're the greatest secret ever, but nobody knows you, right? But you are here to help somebody then you're not helping anyone, right? Because you're hiding your value. So to show your value and to share what you're really about. And that goes back to, I think Peter Drucker says, if you do marketing right, you don't have to sell because then it comes back to, here's who I am. Here's what I'm about. Here's why you would want to work with me. If you're this person, this is what I offer. You're going to need this. And if not, here's somebody else. Here's them or, or just it's not, not the right fit. So I hope that helps clarify. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just really setting your your stake and announcing the difference that makes a difference in your business and why somebody would want to work with you if they are X, Y, and Z, and getting so clear on that. So he talks about you know the Grand Canyon wouldn't be the Grand Canyon without those two really clear walls dividing and and just being that it would just be the, a big puddle somewhere in the middle of the states. So getting so clear on like, this is our lane, this is what we do really, really well, and here's why you would wanna work with us if this is what you want. Um, and he talks about in terms of systems, and obviously systems are really important for growth and for business and whatnot, but also knowing that you have to, if you want heads and hearts, and not just arms and legs in your business, you have to be gentle with your systems and you have to bring your heart into that. And I think a, a key example that comes to my mind is when the pandemic hit, like I've done short term rentals for years and you know, business kind of stopped overnight and a lot of people were asking for refunds and I have a no refund policy. But to me, the right thing to do at that time was to give the refund. Um, so it's like, you know what's right and you feel it. So it's, sometimes it goes against what your policy is, but you take things as they come. And I think that's also what helps us be really good business owners is that it's not just a system that's in place. Cause I'm sure we've all called something and they're like, this is just how it is. And you're like, yeah, but this. And so just knowing when 
you know, to bring human into your business is also super important. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, going back to find out what they want. Um, this is, <laughs> he makes it so simple. Find out what they want, go and get it, give it to them, repeat. So he says, again, don't be passionate about your product, be passionate about your customer's outcomes. And he says, find the quacking ducks, right? If you find quacking ducks and you bring them bread, they're gonna want it. Um, and so in that sense, it's like, you know, if you're sitting back and reevaluating your business, where are the trains? Oh, on a train track. So go find the train track and you'll find the trains, right? And so, um, yeah, yeah, I hope that helps someone. Um, let's see. Um, these are his three rules that he brings to his business and what he tells his employees and I love them because they're so so simple and literally all of us can implement them um, let's do the right thing let's do the best we can and let's show other people that we care so that was super helpful um, let's see could you repeat those please Yes, absolutely. Let's do the right thing. Let's do the best we can. And let's show other people that we care. Yeah. Super simple, right? And yet people are going to feel that in your business when you're showing up in that way. Yes, yes. Um, let's see. So why do people that know about me say no to my product or service if they're the right fit for it, right? Um, because they perceive a risk, you know, they think something bad could happen. They think maybe somebody else could do it better. So risk is a perception, but to them it's real. So know how to speak to your audience, to your client in a way that addresses their perceived risks. Um, friction, we've all, well, I don't know about everyone. This is, if I go to sign up for something and I apologize, cause I realized I created some friction with the zoom call with, I guess, not sending out a link that allowed people to get on. So I'll figure that out. Um, but if there's friction, then people don't do it. Right. And I've gone to websites and they're asking me for this and this and this, I'm like, oh, it's too much. Just give me the information that I want. And then maybe I'll give you my information once I see that what you're giving me is of value, right? So if you create too much friction for your product, and I definitely recommend having people test out your product, your offer, your service, your just to see how easy it is. Because I've had friends send me links to their product and you can't buy it. Like there's a broken link or there's something so simple, right? But just make sure you're always checking those things to make sure that if a consumer wants to come give you money, or come sign up or whatever it is that it's easy and as frictionless as possible right i love it when people make it easy for me to give them money especially when i've already decided i want to buy i just want to go give you money and if it's too hard for me i'm going to go give money to somebody that makes it easy for me to give my money to them um why else are people saying no that know about me they don't perceive the difference that makes the difference why would I go with you? So that goes back to getting really clear on this is what, who we are and what we're good at. This is why you would want to come to me if you're looking for this and just getting crystal, crystal clear on that. So then it becomes an obvious choice for your, for your clients to move forward with you as opposed to somebody else. And the fourth thing he talks about is why are they not moving forward? They lack a certainty of success. Um, so they remember our customers get to define success, not us, right? There's no point to just create a business and be like, let's see who comes. No, it's about finding that gap in the market, finding what's needed in the market, and then showing up with a, a beautiful solution for that with our specific skill sets and joys and et cetera. Um, so how do your customers want to be impressed? What's meaningful to them? What are you going to do to set up their expectations of success and then over deliver those? And maybe that is asking them, what does success look like? That was something else he talked about is making sure you're polling your current clients and customers. And the people that are nines and tens are gonna be like champions and celebrators of your, of your product. Kind of like I am with Keith 
cutting him right now, right? Like I'm sharing this just because I got so much value out of his course and I'm so excited about what I learned. And I know not everyone is able to attend the four days. So I'm like, if I can share in, you know, an hour, under an hour, some key things and it helps one person take one thing into their business, that's amazing to me. Um, Cause his product is amazing and I learned so much from it. So how do you give your clients certainty of success? And that's getting to know what success means to them and then delivering on that, right? It's, it's so simple, really. Business is so simple and so fun. It's just being creative and it's solving problems and it's seeing things that maybe other people don't see, but we can help them see and then that helps them. So business is quite fun. Um, let's see. So we did that. Okay. All right. So then this is a final little bit of review of the four days. And then anyone have any questions or want to share what they are going to implement their business, I would love to hear. Um, and there's so much more, obviously, like this is just <clears throat> pulling together my notes and I can send my notes to anyone who wants them. Um, but there's so much. So this is also something I'm maybe taking to my thinking time to review the notes on a periodic basis, right? Because each time, of course, like with any course that we go to, we're going to get something new out of it. Um, so he talks about not having goals, but having outcomes, right? So get really clear on what's the outcome that he wants. Cause he talks like a goals about like, if I just throw something at the wall and then throw like draw a circle around it, oh, I hit the bullseye. But if you have a clear outcome, it's your standards are consistently getting you to those outcomes. And so your standards is part of your plan, which is executable, right? If I have an idea, oh, I'm gonna do this, but I don't have a plan to get there, I'm never gonna get there. So he talks about the huge importance of having a plan, executing on that plan, consistently checking in with that plan to see how I can do better. What else can I do? Is this really where I wanna go? What do I wanna work into? Okay. Fall in Sorry, love can I have some differences? Yes. How would you, so what is the difference between the goal and, and the outcome? Is it just a timeline? So he, so this is a great question and I actually asked him this and I don't have full clarity on this. So I'm gonna share what I understand it to be. Um, he talks about a goal as more of just an idea, right? Where an outcome is something that is super executable and specific, and it could just be semantics. So I wouldn't get like super caught up in that, except to say, I mean, it's kind of Tony's RPM, right? As well to know exactly what you're going for and then to have know why you're doing it and to have metrics along the way. But that was something I didn't, he, the, yeah, those are semantics that he used that I wasn't sure personally mm -hmm. if it's super important, but whatever it is, it's knowing where you're going and then having a plan to get there as opposed to just hey, I have a really good idea. We are all so full of good ideas. If all of us executed on all of our good ideas, we'd all be billionaires right now. You know, like mm -hmm. ideas are really cheap, but a plan, well, that's something to, to invest in. So I hope that helps. Yeah, thank you. Maybe if I may, I, maybe it's a difference between the input goal and the output. So as in input, like if my, my outcome is to something I can control and the goal is something I cannot really control. Like I'd like to make hundred million in, in 10 years versus I will email 200 people or something like this. I don't right. know. And then showing up for yourself and constantly reevaluating that. I think that's the biggest thing too, right? He talks about on your scorecard, on your plan, only put things on there that you are actually in control of. Right? Mm. Anything else doesn't matter. The, you know, what's happening with the economy is outside of your control. So obviously take some thinking time, go into thinking time and see, okay, based on what's happening with the economy, with interest rates, whatever it is, how does this affect my business? Those are really important questions. And knowing what you can control is vital because those are the only metrics you can actually work with and track. Um, fall in love with your customer's outcomes, right? It's like your customer's success is your success. If you follow the process, you will win. Um, he says, become a freak on outcomes and deliverables. Um, let's see. Da -dum -da -dum. Know, oh, this is so important. Know what your company values are, right? And again, this to me was something to also bring into my personal life. But if I know what my company values are, what my personal values are, then people, customers clients who aren't that just they go by the wayside i don't waste my time with them they don't waste my time with their time with me 
It's just simple. This is who I am. This is what I'm about. These are the values of my company. Um, so he talks about strategic relationships. Birds of a feather flock together. So again, where are your customers and clients? For him, again, it was a lot of Tony Robbins events. He spoke there. So many people heard him and said, hey, I want more. I know there's more to learn. And so went to his event and he fully delivered there too. So is are there any strategic partnerships that you can create where your clients are already there and somebody already has a big list of people that can be helped by your services. Um, and yeah, ask your ask your clients, how likely is it that they would recommend you to their friends or colleagues and for the people that give you a nine or 10 they're your promoters like write their reviews and I mean have have them write their reviews and put those up for you. And anyone who's under a five like they probably shouldn't be doing business with you because they're not the right fit. Uh, let's see, so those are the main main things that I have here and i'd love to know if anyone wants to share what takeaways or anything I can further clarify or what's one thing that you want to bring into your business that's going to make a difference. I have a question. Yes. So i'm an artist by category i'm a spiritual life coach and this is a brand new business that I started a year ago. And one of my products now is um, spiritual retreats. I'm having a hard time measuring right now because it's such an early stage, um, the parameters. What am I measuring? You know what I'm saying? How many people are attending? Uh, there are different price range. So if you can have uh, more clarity for me specifically. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it can actually help everybody and especially people who are in new businesses. It's I think this is the time where it's most important to set your outcome and consistently reevaluate. So you and, and also decide what do you want your business to be? So before you even create your scorecard, how big do you want it? You know, is your vision is your ultimate vision having hundreds of people at a retreat or having 10 people at a retreat? You know, what does success actually look like to you? And then you can measure your progress based on those things and it can change as you grow and as you evolve and as you step into that right because it's new for you so you might think it's one thing now and it can change into something later and right now you might think oh having a thousand people would be huge success and you might actually be like no i just want a hundred people who are paying this price as opposed to a thousand paying that price you know maybe you want to fill stadiums there's no right or wrong answer to it but it's to say right now from where you sit what is the correct outcome for you and then constantly checking in now that you've just done your first retreat right awesome how did that feel what do you want more of what do you want less of what knowing now what would you do differently next time and then starting to place metrics with that perfect thank you so much yeah of course i have another question please yeah um, when you're creating a scorecard, um, are you just starting from, from where you are now, meaning that maybe in the next year, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe in the next year or so, I let's say I want to have 100 clients, right? But ultimately, I want to have 1,000 clients, but I'm going to start small. So would, would I be creating a scorecard based on what I want next year or ultimately what my dream is? I, I think this is a super personal question. What I would personally do is my ultimate outcome, but then break it down on a yearly, weekly, monthly basis, because that way you see the forward progress and momentum and you can readjust and reevaluate as needed, right? Okay. So hold that big vision for yourself of what you want, why you want it, what it's gonna feel like, who you're serving, how they're being helped, and then track the progress along the way, celebrate, the first client you ever get, right? Like really go go all out celebrating and celebrate the, the deliverables that you are yourself in control of, right? So if, if you get clients, for example, by calling people, I have no idea, um, but say you called 10 people today and that was your goal because according to your metrics, if you call 10 people a day, you're gonna get the clients you need, right? Celebrate the fact that you did the thing that's getting you closer. And then if that's not working and you're like, hey, I need another strategy, well, who can I partner with, 
right? And then seeing, okay, maybe strategic partnerships are on my list or whatever it is, you're constantly kind of tweaking the variables. And some businesses are easier to monitor as well. So he used an example, for example, he had a bunch of car washes and he took his average car wash price from say it was $15 per car wash to $60 a car wash. And this is actually a super important point that I think is worth mentioning he discovered that his target client his target market wasn't people with dirty cars it was new car owners because new car owners cared more about keeping their cars clean right and so because of that he was able to sell a premium product because he wasn't just selling a car wash he wasn't just selling getting the bugs off your windshield he was selling an experience and a feeling right so his metrics though for that car wash the things that he had on his scoreboard were, you know, how many cars per hour, how many, um, what's the average client spend, right? That kind of thing. And that might also help you lease is like, what's your average spend per person? So that's also a great thinking time question is to go in with what are the metrics that matter in my business? Because each of our businesses are going to be different. And so to get the metrics that matter in your business is going to be what moves you forward. And again, this is to me, the, besides thinking time, which kind of this correlates with the most important thing that I took away from there. If you don't have a scoreboard, you don't know if you're winning or losing. So, you know, we all have an, an idea. Oh, I want to make $100 million. Amazing. And what's going to get you there, right? And that can shift as you go, but at least have a plan that you're starting to work towards that you can see, oh, it's working or no, nah, that's not going to work. Let's take another direction. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. I think something that I've learned in my business, um, I own a marketing agency and I have a lot of costs and a lot of team members like associated with every client that comes on and the specific service that they're going to have. Um, and so for me, it was really important to not only focus on, okay, what's the amount of incoming revenue and the clients I want to come on, but what are the costs associated with each of those? So you can make sure that you're keeping your percentages where they need to be as you grow. Because as you have more revenue come in, your costs are also going up with that and your profit margin is going to get smaller and smaller. So I think it's really important to not just be blindsided with like, oh, I'm bringing in X amount of dollars or X amount of clients. But what is that going to mean for on the backside, you know, the money going out as well? Um, so what I have set up is like a, a balance sheet that just like auto generates in um like Excel. And so when I have a new client come on, I automatically go in and I put in the specific costs associated with those services, right? Because it's different for every service. And then I'm able to keep my percentages um, where they need to be. And I actually learned that from um, an AGC workshop that Francis connected me with like a couple of years ago. And um, yeah, it's been a total game changer for me. So just really being tight with your numbers and your percentages and knowing where your profit margin is at is so key. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, Cassie. Anyone else have questions or anyone else want to jump in with something that they're going to implement and what you're going to take out so that you can fit in what you want to implement? Hi, Vicki. Hi. Wait, I can't hear you. Yes. Hi. Yeah. I'll share real quickly because my friend's about to get on an interview. Um, I own a co-working space and everything you say I take super literally now. <laughs> so I need to start polling people and definitely like these are steps that I kind of skipped. Um, I'm a manifesting generator so I feel like I skip a lot of steps to get to just like a launch product. You know like it's an idea, do what I have to do, get it up and running and then kind of backtrack from there. So a lot of this, I was just taking notes on, listen to them, give the people what they want. Just like Francis was telling me the other day, I need more call rooms. Today, we're all scrambling to find space for call rooms. And even if that's investing a little money, I think it'll be worth it. Or a lot of money, that'll be worth it. Um, so that's how I'm taking the notes. Thank you. Amazing. And Vicky, if I can share as well, that might be, if it's not already, a huge metric for you to say, how much money are you going to get from these additional call rooms? And is it worth it? And how many of them are worth it? Because then 
you're actually giving the customers exactly what they want and it's a profitable business. Like we can all run, we can all have hobbies, which is beautiful, but if we want profitable businesses, which I think we all do on this call, then it's a matter of making sure those numbers also work. So yeah, I'm excited for you and your expansion. Yay. Thank you for sharing your notes. I think, you know, it's uh, really refreshing. In fact, I was at uh, BM2, uh, I think it was day before yesterday and Keith was talking about it. one thing resonate with me is that, um, you know, you get what you tolerate. So <laughs> um, again, uh, I'm personally uh, going through road less stupid once again, and I would have to everybody to go through that. And there's so much of wisdom. And the second action, what I'm taking is to put everything in my calendar. Otherwise, after attending all these events, you know, everything's up in the cloud. You need to bring it down to the ground and make it work. So I just want to say thank you for, you know, refreshing all these things because life happens and uh, it's important to execute. Thank you. A hundred percent. Thank you. That is, I think huge for everybody if it's not in your calendar it's not real it doesn't happen it's a wish it's an idea it's a one day i'll do that but once it's once you put it in your calendar now it's real so amazing thank you so much for sharing i'm taking away uh, what you said when you said uh, when you said business is so simple and it's fun um and that really resonated because you know after three days of business mastery you get so much information and and so many great questions and you get out with a feeling, I mean, I got out with a feeling of, wow, it's so, it's just so many levers to optimize. There's just so much stuff to do. And, and within each lever, there are tiny levers I can also optimize. <laughs> but this sentence, like, okay, just remind yourself that it's just, it's very simple. And, and most of it is sort of common sense of you heard it before. So, so what I'm taking away is I'm, I'm going to relax trust that I know this stuff and and yeah and let it go a bit not try to nail everything and and uh, trust myself thank you so much Francis yeah it's amazing thank you for sharing that who's up next hey hey uh, I, I I think the so this is my I was on the uh, founders council but board meeting but um I think the, the biggest distinction that I learned from Keith was the thinking time. Um, thinking time, I'm going to admit the first couple of times, I'm going to have to say three or four was um, difficult because I didn't know what it looked like. And with Keith actually making us take that thinking time and applying it and doing it, utilizing it, um, it, you know, it's, it's being a business owner. It's sometimes it's really lonely because you don't have all the answers. You don't have all the answers. So it gets really lonely and you feel like you don't know. And I love what he said. It's, it's not that somebody doesn't have the ability or the capability. It's just sitting down and actually writing it down. And I've found so much, it's the profound of writing down helps so much because when you sit down and I'm, I'm going to kind of share with, with you guys, what I do is I wake up on Sundays. Um, and the reason I chose Sundays was because um, I wake up at five in the morning and, you know, or I'm sorry, I wake up at four in the morning and I actually get up and I get ready as if I'm going to get ready if like I'm going to go to work. I take a shower. I do everything. I go to this one room and I, it's for some reason, it's this corner I love of the room. And I sit down and I literally put my phone away. But I started asking myself good questions. James, and you're muted. Yeah. Oh, there you are. You're back. Yeah, there. And so what happens is the more I, st you know, I just start writing down stuff that I'm having difficult, difficulty finding answers for. And once you actually zone in, you, you'd be amazed how 
when you focus on that one issue, you start and you start writing it down and start putting your emotions into it, man, you'll start the answers just start coming to you. And it's really helped me out so much because I actually get ready. I I don't even have a drink. I have a coffee before. And um I I, I have a I'm sorry guys, I have a, a, a drink of coffee. And then I start at five o'clock every Sunday morning without interruptions. And that's one of the reasons why. And now I'm finding myself that I somehow take more than an hour now because it's just starts flowing. You just start writing, writing, writing. And you guys thinking time has, it really helps. It, it's, you have the answers. You just, um, you know, in my case, I think I was, I can't speak for everybody, but I used to be lazy. And what I mean by lazy, it means people sometimes, like my, the one that shared this with my, my dad before he passed away, I would go up to him, hey, dad, this, this, this. And he's like, well, go read a book, you know, go find the answer. And I'm like, yeah, dad, but I'm coming and I'm asking you. And he's like, no, yeah, no, no, you're being lazy. You're, you're, you just want the answer. And he goes, you really want to learn about it. And you really want to, he goes, you have, and I love what Keith says is everybody will find the answer. You just got to sit down, focus. And, um, you know, it can be from anything. If you're stuck on something, you'll, you'll find the way if you really want it though. Amazing. So. Thank you so much for sharing that, James. I hope that really inspires everyone to schedule their own thinking time and go in because that's exactly it. It's we have the answers and it's just up to us to go in and to think and to decide and to and maybe the, the, the answer that comes up will say, oh, find a mentor or a resource or something for this. And yet it's got to come from within. So thank you so much for sharing. That's super inspiring. We got two more minutes here. Is it? Are you ending at the top of the hour? Um, we can end. It, we can end exactly at the top of the hour. If anyone wants to share anything, I'm happy to stay on for a few extra minutes. I can stay till 15 after the hour is my max. Um, but if anyone needs to pop off because it is the top of the hour and they've got another commitment, thank you for joining. Super grateful to have you all and hope you found value. And if anyone else wants to share, happy to hear as well. Hey, Francis, I, I was wondering. You can, actually, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Oh, it's Scott. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I learned when you're kind of looking for answers or you're trying to search something and it, it just sort of falls out of the sky at you. And that, and that was this call. So it was very interesting. I thought it was really well done. Um, one question for you is, you know, you, you, ways to get ideas and ways to grow your business. You can get them through your clients. You can get them through um, people, people, just people that you meet, friends, uh, people in your business, your own employees. Like, you know, a lot of companies don't spend a lot of time talking to their employees and generating, like taking that creative time that they were just talking about and um, using that creative time as a group with your employees. I've seen so many great ideas come out that way. But um, at, at the uh, seminar, did they give you any tips on doing that? How to open people up? How to how to get get people creative who maybe normally wouldn't be? Yeah, absolutely. He actually talks about how it's about the owning your teeth part. If you heard that part that I was saying, that if you give your employees the deliverables, the outcomes that you want, they're the ones who are going to come up with the plan because they're the ones who are gonna execute the plan. And then you as the leader are guiding that plan and inspiring that plan and maybe nudging it in a direction if it's going a little bit off direction, but they're the ones who are gonna come up with it. And that's why it's so important to have those A players on your team, right? And one of the things he talks about too is if you had sold your business and didn't have a non-compete and had to restart your business again, you know, who would you hire from your old company? Who would you want to? Who, what else would you do to differentiate yourself from your now competitor that used to be you? And if you start thinking in those terms of things, then it becomes new answers are going to come up. So what James was just saying about thinking time, these are exactly the questions to go into thinking time with 
you know, quiet mm -hmm. room, comfortable place, no distractions, pen and paper, always having a new dot on the page. Okay, what else? Okay, what else? Okay, what else? And that will really help. And if you do have those A players, they're going to want to come up with those solutions, but you have to, as the leader, give them the clear outcome of what plan they're coming up with is going to get to. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've just wowed you or shocked you. I think you. Uh, I the you. internet might have frozen for Scott. <laughs> Mic drop moment. All right. He's wowed. He's wowed, guys. This team is going to come up with so many great things. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else? Can you hear me now? No. Oh, Scott. Yes, I can. Yes, yes. No, I can. You're back. You frozen oh. off moment. Yeah. You're like, wow, my team's going to come up with such great things. All I need to do is give them the outcome that I want to get to. <laughs> you know, you know, actually has a pretty interesting way to do that is um, the, the Google OKR performance system. Have you, have you ever heard of that? No, I'm not familiar with that. Well, it's sort of, it's, it starts off, so you right at the top of the chain. So the CEO would have an objective and mm -hmm. that might be in margin 20%. And that yeah. the, that's the key result and that gets handed down to the people below. So everybody knows exactly what they're expected to do for the quarter or for, for the year or whatever. And there's, there's no questions. Yeah. Um, if I can share quickly as well, that's actually something that he touched on was the importance of not pulling those numbers out of a hat. Right, that the CEO doesn't just say, oh, I'm going to raise it 20%. Okay, but why? And what are your key objectives? And to what Cassie was saying, which I think is really important, is knowing, you know, do I want growth number of customers or do I want growth of revenue? And what are my margins? And what do I want my margins to be? And is my growth consistent with my overall strategy and what I'm delivering? So, yeah, that helps a lot. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. And a problem. Just I've been inside. Like... Sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just had a new question, so keep going on what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I've just said I've been in companies where things get bad, and the solution is okay. Let's just slam together another budget. Mm -hmm. uh, so we end up doing five five-year budgets in the period of uh, over a span of six months, and I don't think that's what you guys were talking about. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't think so. If I'm understanding correctly. No. No. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, my question was, so you're saying like, find out what they want, go get it, repeat. So, you know, for new customers, but did he talk at all about um, for your current customers, like how to pull them, the types of questions to ask to kind of see like, what do they want more of? What do they want that you're not offering? Where do they feel like you could improve? Does he give any framework for how to kind of pull current customers? I feel like exactly what you just said would be a great pull for your current customers, right? Like a note of appreciation. I love that you're with us. I love that we're you know, working together. And what do you love about us? And this is, goes back to who are the raving fans in your business? Who are the people that are going to be your promoters? Now you're putting their reviews on your website. And who are the people that are, you know, you can step up and do better. And who are the people you don't want as clients? So really just ask, it, it, it goes back to keeping it simple, right? It's like, it actually is that simple. Ask people what they want. It's like, it's not, it's so simple. <laughs> That's it. And for us, Cassie, we actually last week pulled our customer delight department, our order fulfillment department and our sales department all separately. And they all came up with different answers to why we lose a customer, which was mm. super enlightening and helped us build a plan to to fix that problem instead of just building a plan to build a plan, which is our normal MO. <laughs> we need so, that amazing. So you question your internal team? We question internally, think. yeah. Okay. We, we have pretty uh, pretty tight relationships with our customers, like people, lots of phone time, lots of Facebook time. Mm -hmm. So so they had a lot of really good ideas and certainly enough starting places for us to get going on it. Yep, so okay, we started with you. optics just for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that interesting? When you see, you really get to where you're going. That is amazing that you did that. Mm -hmm. cool. What business do you operate? Me? We're, we're an e-commerce company. 
What, what, what do you sell? We sell asphalt maintenance equipment and supplies. Interesting. Hmm. It's just too bad you're not up in Canada and need a driveway dent. <laughs> I'm in Muskoka. <laughs> Are you? <Yeah. laughs> Where it was a balmy minus two this morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amy, thank you for sharing that. That was so helpful. Um, Francis, uh, quick question. Uh, we've not met before. Uh, can you share a little bit more about yourself? What do you do? And if there is any way I can uh, contribute because uh, you're doing an awesome job here. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that very much. So I have done vacation rentals for about 12 years based out of Hawaii. And then I've recently got it into syndications and I'm now starting a fund. So I have a short term rental investment fund for people who want to invest passively. They don't want the headaches of being an active investor. They've got investable cash. And this was something I took out of um, Keith's program as well, actually. I thought, okay, who's my ideal client? It's people with investable cash, because you have to be able to invest to invest, um, who are action takers and love to learn and know what they want. because then it's an obvious fit, right? If you're looking for this kind of return and you want this, then this is a great fit for you. And if not, go somewhere else. If you want an active return, if you want to um, work actively within real estate. So that's what I'm doing, short-term rental investment fund. Fantastic. So let's have a conversation offline. I run a software technology company, work with large businesses, but I also have a real estate portfolio where uh, most of the properties are uh, long-term rentals, uh, exploring multifamily and short-term rentals. So we'd love to talk separately. Awesome. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Thank you. you have my email address, right, Deepak? Um, likely, Deepak. but if not, just feel free to message me on WhatsApp it. Yeah, and then we can connect there. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Um, anyone else before we wrap up? Um, yeah. You all got a lot of value, but if anyone else wants to share, I would love to hear. It's super inspiring for me. and actually really helps me. Like Amy, what you said about doing all, you know, going in your company and separately and the different answers, like, whew, that's amazing. That's really cool. Hey, Salome. Hey, um, so this is how my brain works. Now I have to put it all together so I make sure I understand it, okay? Awesome. Um, so what I, at least the gist of what I've heard you say today, um, it's the fact that don't come up with these solutions on your own, right? Don't, because that's something I tend to do, like rack my brain to come up with some answers for my staff or clients. But instead, just ask them, have an outcome in mind, right? So always have this outcome in mind and work your way back in terms of what are the steps that I, we need to take together or you need to do or you can do to help us get to that outcome. So finding mm -hmm. out what is it that they want in terms of my clients and delivering that, in terms of my staff, this is the outcome that we're looking for, you know, depending on what it is that we're going through and having them come up with a plan together is like a team process, right? Um, fall in love with your client's outcome. I need to remember that because I think I, I, I'm in love with therapy. <laughs> I'm in love with therapy to the point where I'm laughing because I can be so passionate about what I do, but I need to um, fall in love with my client's outcome, even though I see the outcome, but you know, I'm talking about the service and all of that. So these are the things that definitely keep us full for, meaning that whatever it is that we are doing, tracking it, tracking it, tracking, tracking every freaking thing and, and, and in that order, right? So um, so basically, I think, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at my notes now to make sure I understand it. At least that's the gist of it, ultimately. Like, you know what I mean? The outcome, consistent um, standard, um, and involving the people you're helping, you know, to help you figure this out instead of trying to do it on your own. Exactly. 100%. I think you hit everything right on the head and it's you go to your thinking time to discover the outcomes, but then yeah, let your team, your customers are the ones that are driving the business, right? Like we, we don't have businesses without customers. You know, we're here to solve problems. We're here to create value and let's create value to what our clients want and polling them, polling our people is an amazing way to do that so that you don't have to do it all. We are so supported. Like Fernando is supporting me with helping. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, Mark. Aloha. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hey. So I'm super sorry for various uh, reasons. I couldn't join the call at the very top of it. So I, I just wrote in the chat, uh, will you be sharing a recording so I can listen to all the wisdom, which I missed at the start? Absolutely. Yeah, just send me a message on WhatsApp and I'll send you the link. Amazing. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Good to see you. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks very, very much, Francis. I've got to go. That was amazing. You're a powerhouse and just um, explained everything very succinctly, which I love. Um, the biggest thing for me is scheduled time to execute. I've been procrastinating way too much lately. So um, just get really clear on my outcome, um, the purpose, like why I actually want it, and then like executing on it. Um, so I am about to jump off this and freaking go execute. So thank you very, very much. And um, I really appreciate you sharing all your uh, your knowledge. So thank you. Amazing. Thanks, Kylie. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Any final shares before we wrap it up? Well, thank you all so much for coming today. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for showing up for yourself. Thank you for sharing your most valuable resource, which is time. Um, and then, yeah, definitely would love to hear any updates of how things go for you as you implement something that you took away today. Or maybe it's just a reminder to go over some notes of, of a course that you've been at and implement something from there, right? So whatever it is, sending you all much aloha and much success to your business. And yeah, much aloha, okay. Take care, everyone. Thank you, Francis. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you, Francis. Bye-bye. So Thank you. Bye. Bye, Francis.